110 podcast. My name is Wendy Myers, and I'm a certified holistic health and nutrition coach. Wow, that's kind of a mouthful. Um, We're broadcasting live from lovely Silver Lake, California. Today, I'm interviewing Dr. Lawrence Wilson about the effectiveness of different healing and detoxification methods. There's a lot of programs out there to choose from, and this show is going to help to clarify if a program you've done or are considering is truly effective in accomplishing your health goals or not. But before we get started, I have to do a little disclaimer. Please keep in mind that this program is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease or health condition. The Live to 110 podcast is solely informational in nature. Please consult your health care practitioner before engaging in any treatment or taking any supplement I suggest on this show. Now, please go back to my website. You can check out my website, live to 110com 110.com. I started this site to educate you about paleo nutrition, the importance of detoxing from heavy metals and industrial chemicals that I believe are the major underlying cause of disease, and how to treat your health conditions naturally without medication. My goal with live to 110com is to help you prevent disease and live a long, healthy life. And if you like what you hear on today's show, please give the Live to 110 podcast a nice review and rating on iTunes. This will help people around the world to find the show easier and get my word out on health, and I would appreciate it so much. Today, we're going to be comparing uh, different healing and detox methods with Dr. Lawrence Wilson. Dr. Lawrence Wilson has a medical degree, but has chosen instead to work as a nutritional consultant. And for over 30 years, he's specialized in nutritional balancing science, a method of uh, improving health that he originally learned from Dr. Paul Eck, founder of Analytical Research Laboratories, where hair mineral analysis testing is performed to determine a targeted nutritional balancing program. And Dr. Wilson is the author of six books and many research papers and over 800 blog posts on his website, drlwilson.com. Good afternoon, Dr. Wilson. How are you? Good afternoon. afternoon. I'm great, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, it's so great to have you again as a guest. Uh, you're such a wealth of knowledge that I just I want to pick your brain a little bit more. <laughs> and okay. uh, you, by the way, studying... I haven't written six books. There are there are currently four books. Oh, four. Oh, I just kind of just, just a little correction. Like Sorry, it looked like yeah. six. My, my well, you know what? I have helped with other books. Oh, okay. I helped you're... with other ones. Okay. Um, I guess I guess that's you know. Anyway. Well, thank you for clarifying that. And um, you've been studying uh, detox and healing methods for over 30 years and have mm-hmm. chosen over all the other healing modalities, including medicine, to advocate nutritional balancing science. And mm-hmm. can you tell the listeners what exactly nutritional balancing is and why it's such a fantastic way to heal your body and resolve almost any health condition? Yes. Um, well, I can... Um, I have, you're right, I have, I've had a practice for over 33 years. I also worked on myself, but I've worked with, um, oh, easily 50,000 people. And over the, that time, I tried many things, as do mo- most, you know, holistic practitioners, um, ex- doing some experimenting on different, different um, uh, supplement programs, methods of detoxification, and other things that people recommend. Um, and actually, nutritional balancing science uses a number of methods, actually about 20, uh, for detoxification. Um, however, the, the main difference is, um, first of all, nutritional balancing science is the creation of Dr. Paul Eck of Phoenix, Arizona, who lived from 19, I think it was 1935 to 1996. Um, uh, and he um, incorporated slowly <clears throat> a number of healing arts in a very up-to-date method of dealing with health problems. That is to say, he incorporated ancient principles and he incorporated the most modern biochemical science <clears throat> because one of the problems today is that the diseases are different. The diseases are different, and both allopathic medicine and naturopathic medicine and all the older systems, whether it be acupuncture, um, you know, yoga methods, 
um, Ayurveda, they are not geared to today's diseases. I guarantee that. They are not. Macrobiotics even, which we use a number of their principles, homeopathy. All these sciences are, um, if not thousands of years old, they're at least 100 years old. Weston Price, that's 100 years old. And so he used biochemical principles and other principles, systems principles, that are actually quite new, newly discovered, I should say. Principles are old, but they were um, worked on recently and incorporated those along with the uh, ancient principles to come up with a system which he was very, um, he changed it as time went on because he saw that the diseases were changing and the, and the situation on earth was changing. Yeah, it's and all so, like environmental, and, chemical, and heavy metals that are causing disease. That's right. We, um, and, it's, and it's more subtle than that. The, the magnetic field of the Earth has changed. The Earth has become much more yin because of radiation poisoning in the last 60, 70 years, you know, the atomic age. Um, there is a proliferation of heavy metals and chemicals like never before. The food supply has deteriorated badly thanks to... Um, what's called the Green Revolution, which is the use of hybrid crops and pesticides and superphosphate fertilizers, which have dramatically increased the yield of our crops, but the nutrient content has gone way down. So the food supply has changed. Uh, the radiation situa situation has changed. Uh, then you've got the electromagnetic stress in the last 20, 30 years, well, between cell phones, computers, um, and uh, that, all that kind of stuff going on all around us. <clears throat> um, and as a result, the bodies have changed. And so uh, the problems are unique today. The bodies are very, very depleted, they're very toxic, and they're very yin in um, macrobiotics or Chinese medicine terms. Yeah, people are getting so sick or in younger and younger ages. It's really frightening. That's right. And the diseases are changing, actually. The type of diseases are also changing. We have all these things today, this chronic fatigue, uh, yeast problems, um, oh, you know, the multiple chemical sensitivity, the leaky gut. Those are all relatively new things. You know, you look yeah, at the typical medical textbook, they're not there. Yeah, and they're autoimmune. Not they're not diagnosed. Yeah, and autoimmune. Well, autoimmune's been around for a while, but not, to, not of course, to the degree it is today where most people have thyroid problems, for example. Most yeah. people. Most people have the start of diabetes. And the cancers are starting at a younger age. The children are all being born toxic. So anyway, nutritional balancing takes into account all this. And it does it in a very unique way. And um, it uses hair mineral analysis in a very special way. The hair test must be run by a lab that doesn't wash the hair. And then it has to be interpreted correctly. And really only Dr. X laboratory understands most of this, how to do that. And then actually I've, I've improved on that uh, in the last 17 years since Dr. X's death. I've continued his research. Um, and it incorporates all these principles. Um, you know, I don't want to go into too much more depth. There's a lot of articles on my website on nutritional balancing science, but it is a synthesis, you might say, of many ancient healing principles and um, uh, and also the most recent systems theory, cybernetics, chaos theory, fractal geometry, transmutation of the elements. These are all brand new, relatively new sciences in the last 50 years. And so it's sort of a mixture of all that. Um, yeah, I know. And nutritional balancing is very much a detox program, and it's a fantastic it is. It is. one of that. The way we set it up is as a detox program, and pe many people don't do it that way. Even Dr. X, if you don't eat a lot of cooked vegetables, you will not get the detox effect. You will oh, not okay. get that effect. And that's very important because we have people who want to do the Weston Price or the Paleo sort of version, but they're not doing as many cooked vegetables, and they will not get the detox effect. And then for, to really get the detox effect, we add coffee enemas and sauna therapy in particular, lamp sauna therapy, and that is much more powerful, much, much more powerful. Um, and so nutritional balancing is very much a detox program because you must do that today. In other words, yeah. any program that you do today, if you want to really make progress with people, detoxification has to be part of it. On the other hand, 
if you just do detoxification, you deplete the body. Almost in all cases, you deplete the body. The bodies are so depleted already that just removing things, whether it's chelation or fasting or vegetarian diets, those things you end up with much more, or distilled water, you end up with much more depleted bodies, and it's no good. Yeah, that's so what I love about nutritional balancing is that it provides a targeted supplement program to support the body nutritionally while you're detoxing. Well, actually, the program doesn't even... What the real program does is it balances the body. As yeah, the yeah. body gets more balanced, it can absorb more nutrients and it can detoxify much better. And then we add the sauna and the coffee enemas, which are detoxification procedures that have been known for you know, years. Um, and we also use foot reflexology um, and chiropractic. While it's not, you know, built in, it, it is certainly recommended because if the spine is all jammed up, you're not going to, um, nothing works right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's very important today too. And when you add those, um, the body detoxes like crazy. And it detoxes much deeper, in my experience, than you can do with chelation therapy or fasting which don't work as well, uh, nearly as well, and they're not nearly as safe today. Yeah, unfortunately, um, detox is it's not really something that many doctors use with their patients, though there are some very progressive doctors that use hair mineral analysis with their patients. And when you go to a doctor or a healer... Well, you most know, of them the, don't do it right, though. Yeah, the, yeah. Of those who do hair analysis, most of them do not understand it well at all. Yeah. Not at all, like 98%. Yeah, they're Fine. using a lab that watches the hair, which is, defeats the purpose. And also, when they get the test results back, they do what we call replacement therapy often. Replacement yeah. therapy means if something comes back low, then we give that. You know, if zinc is low, then you take zinc. If calcium is low, you take calcium. That's called replacement therapy. If something's high, you why, don't take Can you explain why that doesn't work? Because that's yes. what every doctor does. That's what every podcast I listen to, that's what everyone talks about. Yeah. The reason it doesn't work, Dr. Eck tried that early on in his career, um, and it didn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because the hair test um, is not showing you the total body load of a mineral. In other words, a low calcium does not mean you don't have any calcium. A high calcium doesn't mean you have too much. Instead, what it's showing you is a sort of a blueprint or picture of the way the body is metabolizing certain elements, all the elements. Um, but, for example, too much calcium in the hair is, is a calcium loss into the hair. The hair is an excretory tissue. A low calcium is usually a fight-or-flight response. In other words, the, the, what the hair test is showing you is the metabolic patterns of the body, and the minerals happen to reflect that. And if you study Hans Selye's stress theory, you find that when the body goes into a fight or flight response, it dumps, uh, it dumps out in the urine. By the way, you have to know the metabolism of each element. But in the urine, the calcium and the magnesium are excreted. So what happens is the body gets into a low calcium, low magnesium state, and that is a sort of a hypervigilant state because calcium and magnesium are relaxers. And when you go into fight or flight, you don't want to be relaxed. You want to be able to run as fast as you can. And so the body will lower the calcium and the magnesium to do that. And that's what's being reflected there. And Dr. Eck found if he just gave calcium and magnesium to those people, it didn't work. It just doesn't work. If he gave yeah, copper like to those people, the then it works. Yeah, and it's like all the mineral levels affect each other. You can't just take one, it affects another mineral. It has to be balanced, and that's the beauty of nutritional balancing science is it balances out your body so everything, all the levels can rise to the level they're supposed to be at, your yes, minerals. but it's based on some very esoteric principles. In other words, mm -hmm. it's based on the stress theory of disease, and you've got to be able to read, use the minerals. Not <clears throat> It is not telling you the total body load. <clears throat> it is telling you the stage of stress. And, yeah. and once you know the stage of stress, then uh, Dr. Sellier and a, a guy named Watson, George Watson, they figured out that by giving certain minerals, certain vitamins, certain foods, you could move the body back to balance, you see. But, but the problem with replacement therapy is that they're assuming that the level of the mineral in the hair 
is reflecting the level in the body, and it does not. And what about in the blood? Like when you go to your doctor, the every client I talk the to, the blood is even blood, worse. Yeah, because they they go to the doctor and say, "Oh, I had my mineral levels checked and everything was fine." And I'm like, "Well, the right. blood has to be kept in an exact certain level for you to survive." So the the blood won't tell you anything, you know, well, important. Well, it'll tell you if it's if it's very revealing. bad. It'll definitely tell you, and and then you end up in the hospital. In other words, yeah, but if you have a blood test in, in your blood or high calcium, it's it's quite severe. But the blood touches everything, and so the body does keep the blood quite even, you know, quite quite uh, level. The, the levels are kept fairly good, um, yeah. even if you're very sick. And so the blood um, is not generally a good indicator for minerals. Now, again, if you have se- severe kidney disease or something, yes, it will. It'll show you. And, um, and of course, it, it, uh, it, but it's a, re- it's a relatively late indicator. That would be the best way to put it. The blood, yeah. is, in that sense, it's a relatively late indicator. The hair is a relatively early indicator, which means it is better for prevention, prediction, and uh, and and can be used uh, in a different way. So the blood um, is different, just like the urine. The other trouble with the blood is that what you just had for breakfast will influence the blood. Mm-hmm. In other words, whatever you just ate is going to be floating around in your blood. Now you can do a fasting, um, you know, a fasting thing, and that's better if you're going to do blood or urine. Um, But those things are influenced by moment-to-moment activities. Eating, um, if you get upset, your blood will change instantly. Um, If you're tired, your blood will change. You see what I mean? If a woman's on a period, her blood will change. Because it's it's a very instant reading. Now, there are advantages to that, but there are disadvantages. The hair is a long-term reading. Um, it doesn't matter if you're on your period or not or if you um, just had a big breakfast or something. And so that's an advantage of the hair, so that it's a longer term, which you might call more chronic, um, reading. And that is useful because what we're looking at uh, with nutritional balancing is a chronic um, stress indicators and fixing the body at deep levels. Yeah, and so if anyone... I wish the hair did give an instantaneous reading, but it doesn't. Yeah, and it, for listeners out there, if you take anything away from this show today, it's that you can't rely on blood tests to determine your mineral levels and thus your health and if you need to supplement. It just doesn't work that way. So that's why I, I urge people to do a, a hair mineral analysis. Um, well, you have to so, do it, though, with one of the approved practitioners. Yes. Don't Don't waste your time, unfortunately, with most people who offer hair testing. I hate yeah. to say that because I don't like to put people down. But most people, 98%, 99% of the doctors, nutritionists, naturopaths, others who offer hair testing, um, they don't know how to interpret the test according to Dr. X method. They do replacement therapy mainly. Or they just look for toxic metals, and then they do chelation. That's not the way to use a test. Yeah, and the hair the hair test doesn't. I had a friend of mine say, "Oh, I got my hair test, and I don't have any toxic metals." And the first test doesn't show anything. Like I didn't start showing toxic metals until I was six months on a on a program. They're they're hidden. Yeah, they're, deep, they're deeply they're hidden in your tissues. Also, you have to know that if you have very low toxic metal readings, we call that a poor eliminator pattern, and it does not mean you don't have any. It means you can't eliminate them, meaning they're not coming out in your hair. They're stuck in your liver kidneys, brain, female organs, other places where they're doing a lot of damage, mm-hmm. but they're not in the hair. And that's yeah. a very reliable indicator, the poor eliminator pattern, which is written up on, on the website. Um, and so you have to learn how to interpret the hair test. Most doctors, unfortunately, don't. I teach it, but I don't get a lot of takers, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. so if you do get a hair test out there, guys, you got to make sure it's coming from Trace Elements Labs or Analytical Research Labs. Because those are the only two labs in the U.S. that don't wash the hair. Except for one problem, which is the Trace Elements. Um, they don't interpret it quite the same way. Oh, they don't? Okay. So I don't, no, no. So you're um, not recommending them? Nope, don't recommend Trace Elements at all. Okay. They're, they don't put the ideal levels on their graph. So it's very, very hard to find the patterns. Ah, they used okay. to, but they took it off. Uh, they also um, 
<clears throat> the graphs, they change the normals, so that makes it confusing. They don't use the same terminology, <clears throat> and the man that runs the lab uh, was an employee of Dr. X, but he left in 1983, and a lot of what he does is the same way he did it in 1983. Uh-huh. Science has moved way, way beyond that with some newer patterns, some very important patterns like four lows and sympathetic dominance, poor eliminator, and he's not reading those. He's not paying attention, and neither are the people who use his lab, you know, the doctors and nutritionists. So yeah, that's, really the, that's, not that's, dominance, that's incredible. Yeah, that's estrogen dominance is incredibly important. That pattern. That's just one very important one. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is they sort of cheapen the products, and and so they don't work as well. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about some other detox methods, and we'll just do compare and contrast because there are so many detox methods out there, and there's so many things people are doing and have the options of doing. So when people go to their doctor, what are some of the more common detox methods that they're going to be offered by their physician? Like, let's talk about um, chelation therapy. A lot of people will present at their doctor with mercury toxicity or another type of toxicity, and they'll be offered chelation. What do you think about this method of detox? Don't like it at all. Um, It will remove some toxic metals. Um, Chelation therapy consists of giving um, substances as either chemical substances or natural substances. You know, the chemicals are EDTA, DMPS, DMSA, and then there's a few others less often used like penicillamine, um, deferoxamine, which is for iron. And um, they, these chemicals or natural substances like chlorella, spirulina, possibly um, bugleweed, yellow dock, zeolite, they bind to toxic metals, mostly ones that are in your blood. They don't necessarily go to the tissues very well. They are not absorbed into the tissues. But they mostly bind to things that are in the blood. And then they uh, go to the kidneys, generally, um, and some of the metal is removed through the kidneys. Now, what Dr. Eck found years ago is that the chelation therapy um, damages the kidneys. And the reason is is that the chelating agents are slightly toxic, and therefore they build up in the kidney. That's one problem. Another problem is that the the chelating, and by the way, chelation I think is better, say for heart bypass than bypass surgery, which is even worse. You know, to spend five or six hours on under anesthesia, getting your arteries replaced or reamed out or whatever. But chelation has a lot of drawbacks and problems, and we don't need chelation. The nutritional balancing will remove the metals deeper and safer and just as fast or faster. Um, So anyway, uh, with chelation, one of the problems is that the the chelating drugs themselves and and even the natural substance is somewhat toxic, and they build up in the kidneys. Secondly, some vital minerals are removed along with the toxic ones. In other words, the drugs and the, the natural substances are not that specific, and that's a problem because the bodies are already depleted. So you re- remove any of the good minerals and you're making the person worse. And replacing your good minerals, you cannot do that by just adding a bunch of minerals to an IV bottle or taking a vitamin pill, you know, a mineral vitamin pill. Because doctors will tell you, well, don't worry about that. We'll just give you, you know, some uh, vitamins or minerals uh, with your chelating substance and you'll be fine. Nope. The forms of the minerals are very special. And once you lose them, it's not so easy to get them back. Yeah, because um, even it takes years to on a nutritional balancing program to replace, to replace your minerals. Certain nutrients. That's right. And years. the reason is because they're special forms. They're special. Minerals are not just minerals. There's, there's many forms or compounds of each mineral. Another problem with chelation is that it tends to throw the body out of balance because it sort of rips the toxic metals out, if you know what I mean. It's they're powerful uh, chemicals. And the body's that, using those, isn't it? It's using those for a purpose. Well, it may be. Some of them, that's correct. And so oh. just pulling them out uh, tends to unbalance things. And in some cases, the side effects are horrible, of course. In other cases, and that's from unbalancing the body usually. Um, in other cases, you don't notice it, but the, the balance of the minerals in the body is made worse. And there's no way to correct that because the agents are just very powerful and they just, 
you know, draw things out, and they you can't really control it very well. Um, and it's really an allopathic approach. It's important to understand that just because it's being done by a naturopath or a nutritionist, it's really a more of a here's the problem, copper or mercury, and here's the solution, a drug or a, an agent, and we'll pull it out. That's an allopathic approach. And we find that that is often lacking. There are times for it, but, but it's often lacking in its overall effect on the system, the whole body system. We prefer to balance the body. As we balance the body, the body removes the toxic metals. The body has a million years of experience with mercury, cadmium, arsenic, lead. These are not new substances. If the body's energy is improved sufficiently and the body brought to balance and the body made more yang in Chinese terms today, then the body naturally goes to work and gets rid of those metals. We also support the organs of elimination, the kidneys, the liver, lungs, the skin, and that dramatically improves the speed at which you can get those metals out. Um, and, and nutritional balancing uses about, I don't know, at least 10 other methods um, to remove the toxic metals um, faster and safer. Yeah, I'm so, really happy. Um, I, got my, I got my latest test back, and I'm, removing a, I'm dumping a ton of lead and arsenic as well. So yes, really, one really thing, that, that's another difference. Chelation, the doctor decides which metals will come out. He gives mm. a different agent for you know, lead or a different agent for copper or something. We don't really know that, but if you do nutritional balancing, the body will dump the one that it needs to dump now. And then when that's done, it'll dump a little bit of something else. And then it might come back and do a little more lead you know, and a little more cadmium. And then it might do some aluminum. You see, it goes in its own order, and there's a certain wisdom there. Um, chelation, you ignore that order, and you just say, oh, look, well, let's go after that mercury. You know what I mean? Well, that's not necessarily what the body needs at that time. And um, so it, it upsets things. It can, it can definitely unbalance things, and it can be dangerous. So that's another advantage. Nutritional balancing, we just balance things. And it's surprising. It's always surprising. You get your test back, and all of a sudden you're eliminating um, selenium or something. I know that sounds strange, but I just reviewed a test this morning, and the selenium level just went way off the scale. Now, I don't know what caused that. I don't know where this gentleman, who's uh, about 65, got all his selenium, maybe from shampoo or drinking water, but he had a, a toxic form of selenium, and it's all pouring out. It's all pouring wow. out, and he's getting well. Yeah, that's so really the body will remove all of them. You see, that's another problem with chelation. Chelation generally is geared only toward, you know, a few. Yeah. Um, nutritional balancing will get rid of all of them in their own order, in their own order. But but none are missed, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so I love it. All... It, just, it takes time for the body to do that. You can't just chelate yeah, a metal for a month or a few weeks. It takes a lot of time for the body to adjust and get rid of all these metals. It takes a one, two, three well, years or more. No, actually, it's more like 20 or 30. 20 or 30? Oh, no. I'm gonna be I would say so. <laughs> well, you know, I've been doing this for 33 years. I'm still eliminating all kinds of toxic metals. On oh, the other wow. hand, I didn't do the program correctly. Yeah. For, you know, at least 15 of those years, um, Dr. Eck was still developing the program. I was drinking the wrong kind of water. I was drinking reverse osmosis water. Um, I was eating fruit and other foods that we now find are harmful. Um, I was working hard. That gets in your way yeah. of healing. And um, I probably had emotional problems that also get in the way. You know, I would slowly have worked those out, traumas, whatever you want to call them. And so um, there's no question. And also I did start out pretty sick. Um, some people are healthier to begin with. Um, but actually, I remember it took eight years just for my body to start eliminating cadmium. Mm. And my mother had smoked while she had been carrying me and for five years after I was born. So I knew I was exposed to that metal. But it took eight years just for that one. Just for that one. Wow. Yeah, and I also... And that's not unusual. Yeah, and the years go by, people are just 
doing nothing, they're they're still accumulating metals. They eat, breathe, and drink, and they're still accumulating metals and toxins that have to continually yeah. be detoxed. So you basically have to be on a yeah. lifelong detox program anyways if you plan to be healthy and live a long time. Or a deto- uh, lifelong healing program. Now, having said that, um, it, it didn't take me that long on a nutritional balancing program to be functioning well enough to work, you, you follow. In other words, mm-hmm. it's not that you're going to lie in bed for 10 years, not by yeah. any means. You will, your, your health will start to improve often immediately, but you can go deeper and deeper. As you do with a nutritional balancing program, other benefits show up, which we call development. And these are actually um, deep improvements in the physiology of the body, which improve your mental functioning and things like immune system. And what we find is that after several years on a nutritional balancing program, for example, the thymus gland will begin to regenerate an adult. As you, as you probably know, the thymus atrophies. And most people, by the time they're 50, by the time they're 30, it started. And by the time they're 50, the thymus has just shrunk up to nothing. And what is their the ability, it, it is a lymph gland, and it has to do with fighting infections. Okay. And it, it shrivels up, and, and then your ability to handle infections decreases, your chances of getting cancer increases. Um, I'm hearing that yours, Wendy, is, I think yours is, is, uh, is not fully gone yet, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Mine was. Um, I was more ill. But the thymus gland can regenerate. Uh, something called the Pyres patches can regenerate after a while, but that may take even longer. So are you saying um, my thymus was almost toast? <laughs> no, it's not that bad compared to others. It was what I okay, meant. Good. It was, it's not. That's um, but that's because you've been living probably better than other people yeah. you know, for some time. I've um, definitely been eating healthy, eating a lot of food. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, a lot of people, these organs, um, another change that we find is the glial cells in the brain, they start to degenerate. The glial cells are support cells. And as they sort of atrophy and uh, shrink, more neurons grow. Neurons are the thinking cells. They're the actual brain cells. Glial cells are supportive cells. They don't do anything, you know, for your brain power. And so your, your brain power or your brain capacity actually increases. And so these are changes that we call development. And there are more. But it means a better memory, a better mind, a stronger body, longer life, generally a happier life. Yeah, and, and I've noticed that too with myself. I I just feel so much more alive and alert and my memory is working better. And, you know, I, I really wasn't that sick before I got on the program. I just kind of was yeah, having a hard time. you're just starting out. Yeah, I know. I'm a baby. And um, yeah. I just... I didn't have that too many health problems. I just kind of was generally tired. I wasn't feeling good. I couldn't think clearly. But within about a month, that that went generally resolved. I was having sleeping issues. So after a month, I felt better, and now I just continued to improve. But as definitely if someone's a lot sicker, it's going to take them longer to get a little it bit might. better and get results. I mean, many people, it varies. You see, one, one of the problems with nutritional balancing is that, that we allow the body to do things in its own order. And sometimes the body, right off the bat, will remove some toxins, perhaps, or something will shift in the balance, and you feel much better. Even if you're very sick, but you can feel much better. Um, Although generally, you know, if you're sicker, it'll take a little longer. Other times, um, and these people don't stay with the program sometimes, the body decides, you know, we got a real problem here. It may be an old infection because nutritional balancing will clear infections, which you can look at as biological toxins. Um, And uh, it's amazing, the infections that will clear up. Most people have dozens of them. I don't like to say that sometimes because people get discouraged, but they do. They have old ear infections, old sinus infections. Those are probably the most common. Um, Respiratory infections, you know, bronchial things, digestive infections. Uh, a lot of people have STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, even if you never had sex, because you can pick them up from hot tubs and swimming pools and toilet seats even in other places these days. Um, mm-hmm. They're so common. And the body will go to work on those. As your vitality improves, as the energy improves, the body starts to improve everything. But you can have what we call a healing reaction as a result. 
And so you may not feel great at first. You may have to go through something. You didn't have to do that, Wendy, so um, that's great. You know what I mean? So within a month, yeah. you're feeling better. I haven't had too many healing reactions. I've kind of had a couple of headaches here and there. I've been real crabby. Definitely have some like crabby moments, <laughs> but nothing too debilitating. Or I haven't been in bed or anything like that. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. Then that's what we like. Um, some people will, and the trick is not to quit the program and to realize that this is important. To in other words, if the, if this is up for you, if if something comes up, and like I had an ear infection come up where I got dizzy and. But I had a lot of ear infections as a child. You see what I mean? Yeah. I also started spitting up green mucus at one point. But then I had a lot of respiratory problems as a child. And so if these things come up, there's a reason for it. And we can handle it. Um, But you won't feel quite as wonderful. Um, And uh, the program works at other levels. Believe it or not, it helps you remove um, uh, what you might call karma or... Um, things that are in your way, the blocks that are in your way, we call them movement patterns because the word karma doesn't sit well with many Western people. But the the hair test can show us how, how a person is moving in their life. Fast oxidizer are moving fast. Low oxidizer is moving slowly. Calcium shell, very slow movement. And uh, in the book, the big blue book, Nutritional Balancing and Hair Mineral Analysis, uh, for each of the patterns, there's a movement. It says the movement pattern. And the, the program will take you, take you back in your life and help you retrace old traumas and clear incidents and attitudes and other things that are in your way. It's quite yeah. remarkable. It's quite remarkable. And that's a type of detox, too. You know, for example, a lady might have to detox her old husband. Her husband. <laughs> I've got to detox I mean? and come in my way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, a child might have to detox his parents. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And believe me, that's the case. That is the case. Traumas are real. Been, maybe that's why I've been crabby. I've doing, been doing emotional detoxing. Well, it is part of the program. Yeah. And I think it's a really and for interesting. For some people, it's very extreme. For most yeah, it's people, very it's, just, interesting. You know, it's very interesting. In other words, we don't separate mind and body that way. Um, some days it'll be a mental detox, and some day it'll be a physical, you know, a cold or a sore throat or um, or a, a metal or a chemical coming out of the body. You know, it'll be a medical drug. I had to l- release a lot of medical drugs because I took a lot of them as a child. Yeah. And they build up in your body, believe me. That's one of the problems with medical methods, the allopathic methods, is that the medical drugs build up. Antibiotics are one of the worst, by the way. And you end up... You, so many people call me up and they say, I was just fine until I took a course of antibiotics. And now, you know, I, I can't digest anything, and I have headaches all the time, and my liver hurts. Yeah, because those drugs don't leave your body. Some of them leave your body, but... Um, some of them hang around. Yeah. And we have to get them out. When you get the drugs out, the body starts, you know, performing as as it should. Um, you know, and, and so that's I, part I, of detox too. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about maybe comparing, contrasting some other things, nutritional balancing. Okay. Well, we've definitely but, established nutritional balancing. I'm all for it. It's unbelievable. But I, a lot of people are doing all kinds of weird stuff these days, and I well, want to make doing fasting. I want to set them straight. Right. Yeah, a lot of people are doing fasting. What do you think about that? I know you ran a fasting clinic for, or you were a director of one for a number of years. Yes, what is, I did work at a fasting spa. It was a natural hygiene, <clears throat> vegetarian, you know, raw food um, fasting spa um, based on the work of Herbert Shelton and uh, other, you know, his, his group there. And uh, I was disappointed in the results, but I didn't understand why in those days. Now I do. Because what we find is the bodies are so depleted, they are so depleted, that when you go on a fast, even even a fruit fast or a juice fast, in other words, it doesn't even have to be just water, you deplete the body further. And I can say that categorically. Now, in the good old days, you know, maybe when in the biblical days, 2,000 years ago, because fasting is recommended in the Bible, for example, 
the the bodies were much more uh, nourished. The food was much, 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 much better. And this is easy to prove. You know, there are books. I can't remember the name of the author. Maybe you know Wendy, who um, have compared the USDA statistics on our food, the food we eat, from 100 years ago to today. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for example, a carrot, you know, may have a hundredth of the amount of certain vitamins than it had 100 years ago and minerals. And um, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. It's simple to understand why, because they grow 10 times more carrots on the same piece of land, and they use superphosphate fertilizers, which don't contain trace minerals. They contain NPK. Um, And so they're not putting back all the manure, you know, and all that stuff, the minerals on the soil. And so the food is lower in minerals. It's very yeah. simple. Um, and so, when, it, and so as fast, a result, fasting doesn't work well. And yeah. most everybody who does fasting comes away more depleted. Yeah. And that includes, you know, including any kind of fast, juice, you know, just a fruit kind of thing or um, whatever. I wouldn't so, even fast for more than a day or two. Yeah, and so how do you explain, like, some people, they, they fast and their their symptoms clear, they, they get rid of their so inflammation. Fasting does do certain things. There's no question. Fasting yeah. rests your intestine, for example. Fasting gets you off of all your allergic foods. So there's no question, just like chelation does something, fasting definitely, you know, affects the body. I had I watched people get rid of their diabetes, and one man had was blind, and his vision came back. Uh, during his fast at the health spa. Wow. I remember because he was heaving. He was throwing up bile. and You know, the eyes are related to the liver. And and the the fast allowed him to clean up his liver. And when he did that, his, his vision came back, which was really yeah. quite amazing. So, yes, fasting definitely does something. And I don't mean to say it's absolutely no good that it does nothing. However... There's the price to pay. Yeah, and I don't recommend it because I don't think it's safe. And the number of cases where you'd have all those miraculous results was not as high as I expected if you read Dr. Shelton's work. And Dr. Shelton's work was 100 years ago. Very important to understand that. 100 years ago, the bodies were much better nourished. Now, if you really want to do fasting, what I would do is I would do a nutritional balancing program, say for two or three years. That's how long it takes to re-nourish the body at least a little bit, and then do a week of fasting if you want. But if you just go on a fast, um, you're going to get more depleted. That's my experience. You know, we find that most bodies are so bad, like we help a lot of women get pregnant. Um, And usually um, it takes them, now they can often get pregnant within six months, but we really like them to wait two years. That's how long it takes to at least bring their nutrition up to some acceptable level. It yeah. doesn't matter how beautiful they look. It doesn't matter. The bodies are depleted. Yeah. The bodies are depleted. So, so that would be the thing line, on fasting. Bottom line, there's better ways to detox than fasting. There's safer ways I to think detox. there are. There may be times for fasting, a short fast particularly, it really does rest the gut, the, gut, the intestinal tract. And that's a real problem for some people. So there may be a time for a short fast, but Dr. X stayed away from fasting. He found that it was not necessary, it was not helpful, especially if you'll do our diet. And one of the features of the diet, and I do this with anyone who's got a very bad gut, like leaky gut, is eat one food at a meal. You know, babies do that. If you if you just put food in front of them, they often will just eat one type of food uh, per meal. And that is much easier to digest. Much mm. easier to digest. And you could call that a type of fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, just keeping it simple. Keeping it very simple. I suggest no more than two types of food at a meal. Mm-hmm. Cooked vegetables and either one starch or one protein. That's the latest way I like to do the diets. If you start combining more, you know, if you keep it simple, well, maybe you can get away with it. But a lot of people's intestine is so bad that they do much better on uh, mono meals, they call it, which is one food per meal, which is sort of like a fast, except that you you change foods. You know what I mean? You can have different yeah. foods. 
I know I am so far I'm so far from mono meals. I love a smorgasbord where I have I love to have like ten different things. I can munch a little bit of each thing, but it's it's hard to digest, I know. It is. You would make faster progress, Wendy, you'd find. Um okay. you'd make faster progress if you got back to the way, you know, two and three and four year olds like to eat. And by okay. the way, many primitive people also. You know, the primitive people they don't have the variety for one thing. You know, they don't have supermarkets. Um, but, you know, they'd kill an animal and they'd, everybody would sit around and eat some of the animal. Or they'd um, cook some bread and everybody, you know, eats some bread. But the point is um, the meals were much simpler. Much yeah. Simpler. Yeah, we need to get better for your digestion. Simple. Yeah. Now, can you explain um, why some healers and doctors use IV or IM therapy? And uh, do you recommend these methods? You mean vitamins? I mean, IV yeah, vitamins. Vitamin, yeah, IV vitamins. Yeah, well, first of all, it's fast. I mean, you know, IV, you're bypassing NIM, intramuscular and intravenous. You're bypassing the stomach, and so vitamins and minerals can be delivered directly into the bloodstream. Um, and so that is actually the appeal of that, I would say. Um, however, um, you know, and and it definitely... It's a different theory because, again, you're not, ten, you're not going to be able to balance the body very well. The body has all kinds of buffering systems. So when you eat, for example, let's say you eat a meal that's full of milk, let's say it's high in calcium. Well, that much calcium would kill you. So the body absorbs a certain amount of it and lets the rest pass. And it has all these very sophisticated buffering systems so that you don't overdo on something. Even if you drank something like orange juice that's high in say potassium or something, that that much potassium would kill you or could if you just uh, took it all in. So the body regulates how much is absorbed. And, of course, there's no control like that with IV or much less. Um, and uh, we find that uh, the body's mechanisms, we can work with it. I don't seem to need IV vitamins. Uh, it's all IV also is, of course, more expensive and more work and have to find a vein and all that kind of thing. But the real problem is is that it doesn't tend to balance the body. It is good if someone is very, very depleted. It might be good to do an IV vitamin thing, you know, once or twice. It's sort of like filling up a garbage pail, you know, just throwing all the vitamins at, vitamins and minerals in there. The body can take what it wants kind of thing. But yeah. what we find is that it, it's yin and it will unbalance things. I guess that's why so, you see a lot of cancer patients doing them because they're so depleted. Some cancer patients, yes, but the lady that we recommend and the therapies we recommend, the Kelly program and, and uh, Protocell or Cantron, that does not involve IVs as a general rule. Okay. It does not, it does not require them, does not re- involve them, and we don't like them. They're yin. <laughs> and yin and, is bad today. And many doctors are using mega doses of supplements, and I, I've heard of a, a few friends that have very low vitamin D levels because they're a vegan, um, being uh-huh. given fifty thousand IU of vitamin D. Like, isn't that toxic? Yeah, well, if they do it just for a short time, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean to build them up. Um, yeah, there's the orthomolecular approach, which is the use of high dose vitamins like vitamin C and others. Um, Doctor X shied away from that. First of all, with nutritional balancing, you don't have to. It's a more delicate balancing. And secondly, it's more of a drug use. It's more of using vitamins like drugs, which you can do, but it does not rebuild the body. It just is a temporary remedy. Mm. I used to go to the orthomolecular conventions. I remember going there. There were 500 cured schizophrenics in the audience. And I, w- I went and talked to them and they said, yeah, of course, they had to stay on those high doses of vitamins. They were taking niacin and zinc, B6. Um, if they got off the vitamins within two days, they would be psychotic again. Wow. You know, schizophrenia would come back. So they weren't getting cured, so to speak. They weren't really getting corrected. It was a remedy. And is it better than drugs? Yes, I think it is better than drugs. It's less toxic. Although niacin can be nasty. In, um, you know, can build up in the body, but it. So I think I think the orthomolecular approach is better than drugs, but it certainly is not 
too sophisticated, it doesn't balance the body. It's a step in the right direction. You know, Linus Pauling and all the work that he did. Um, and supplements are yin, as are herbs. And so in nutritional balancing, we're very careful about giving too many supplements and okay. about giving high doses of them. Yeah, as I learned from you guys, as I, I walked through the door and I was taking like 30 different supplements, so definitely something I learned from you guys and uh, you and Nikki Moses was less is more. Just taking, yes, I think it really about is. In the, in the area of supplements and herbs, uh, we don't really like homeopathy too much for the same reason. It's very yin, um, and some people are doing a lot. Um, and you don't you don't really need those. It's strange because you would think that you would. People actually, I lose clients that way. People come in mm-hmm. with a big shopping bag and they've read, you know, Life Extension or Prevention magazine or some other magazines. And when I tell them they don't need, you know, N-acetylcysteine and alpha lipoic acid and you know, vitamin E especially and other things, they they leave. They just figure, well, you know what? He doesn't know what he's talking about. I know, and it, I used I used to read the the I get the life inspection life extension uh, newsletter and so many other newsletters, and you have to realize that these uh, the newsletters and articles are so convincing, but these companies are selling products. That's why yes. they write really good articles, which are to sell them to you. So you have to be careful what you read and who's what's the motivation. Yes, you have to be very career. careful, and same with internet research. There's an yeah. article on my website about Internet research and all the pitfalls because I get called all the time. Well, I read this article on the Internet. And, you know, it says you should, should never do magnesium stearate or don't do this or do this. Yeah, but anybody can write an article, and you're right. A lot of them are commercial, selling yeah. products and other things. Um, and then there's a lot of just partial information or incorrect information for various reasons. The medical profession probably owns a thousand websites, you realize, the AMA and their friends. Yeah. And they don't want you doing all these vitamins. So they put up a lot of, you know, scary stuff. How you yeah. can die from this and die from that. And so you have to be very, very careful. And I would say the inexperienced person, it's impossible. Yeah. It's hard enough. It's hard enough for someone like me or you, Wendy, who, you know, works in this field full time. I have an advantage that I work with many people, probably a thousand people, and I get feedback. And people tell me, I'm doing this product, I saw it on the internet or wherever they saw it, and what do you think? And um, we have ways with the hair test and others to kind of look inside and see how the product is working. But if you're not doing that, if you're not a full-time researcher, it's very impossible really to check out all the claims. Yeah, because I know when I'm I'm reading I'm reading articles. Um, so I'll read an article about the like for instance there was a recent one on CBS News about Gardasil, the HPV vaccine, and how it's improving the reproductive health of women by fifty six percent or some BS like yeah. that. And of course, I the second I look at it, I know the study was paid for by the pharmaceutical industry and most researchers. Yeah, so you know that, it. but other people don't realize. It. Yeah, and then it's it's being broadcast on CBS, who's the pharmaceutical industry's commercials are being shown on CBS. So of course yeah. they're going to report that. They're not going to. You never see anything in the news about deaths from vaccines or deaths from medications. Very very rare, unless it's just so overwhelmingly blatant that it it has to be reported for them to yeah. the news outlet to look legitimate. But it's just so difficult to discern what is being paid for by the medical association, the pharmaceutical industry, and what is legitimate research that's totally unbiased. That's right. And even the medical journal, they had something in the New England Journal of Medicine lamenting the fact that the level of integrity of medical studies today is very low. That even the medical journals wrote that, that uh, lamenting the fact that it's so easy for a drug company to pay off a doctor to do a study and you don't know, you know what I mean? The, he doesn't reveal that he's being bribed, you know, being paid half a million dollars to come to some conclusion. Um, and that just goes on all the time. That just goes yeah. on all the time. Yeah, I, I think so if any listeners are out there and you're reading something, if you're reading something about a study, try to find out who paid for the study because the results will typically be favorable to the funder. Yes, but they, they are very... Um, Clever. 
They're sneaky. About, they're sneaky. About, yeah, no. They're sneaky about keeping that hidden. Um, yeah. And it usually takes real investigative journalism, which there isn't too much of that around, to find out who's really behind this and what do they really do. By the way, interpreting studies is very hard anyway, meaning yeah. that the, they may have picked the people for the study you know, who they knew would benefit. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So there are all kinds of sneaky ways to bias a study, all kinds of ways. Typical ways, for example, the cancer studies, they stop the study um, before the side effects of the drugs really kick in. That's mm-hmm. a typical way. Another thing they do is they, they only do five-year survival time. So if you're alive in five years, you're cured. They call that a cure. But if you die the very next day, they don't mention that. Yeah. You see what I mean? So there are all kinds of tricky things that bias studies. And um, that's, where, that's why it's very hard, actually, to do good research uh, yourself. And yeah, and also they, they do it. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you have to depend on clinically oriented people. And that's where I hope we can help. Yeah, you, that's, why, that's important to find a don't. few find a few reliable sources of information. Like I, I go to your website, I go to chriscresser dot com, and a couple other people who I rely on if I want the real the real take on a subject, unbiased take. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's very difficult, um, <clears throat> and it's <clears throat> it's very tempting because some people have beautiful websites, you know. And they can sound very convincing. Yeah. So. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, hormone replacement therapy. Because this is a biggie, because one in five people are on thyroid hormones, and many millions of women are on hormone replacement therapy for their adrenal function or menopause or what have you. And, um, you know, I learned from you that one of the major ways people can prevent true healing is with hormone replacement therapy. And, you know, this is something that's commonly going to be recommended by a physician when someone has adrenal fatigue, thyroid conditions, or like I said, menopause. And, you know, I fell under the spell of thyroid replacement hormone to increase my metabolism. I got this brilliant idea to lose weight by taking thyroid hormones um, because my thyroid was underactive because of toxins and other reasons. And I got some testing done, but my thyroid was normal. Um, but I had I was presenting with thyroid symptoms and... What they found was I was producing hormones, but they just weren't getting into my cells. So my case would have been totally overlooked by almost all doctors, even naturopaths. And after I had my hair mineral analysis, I I learned that I was estrogen dominant and that this excess estrogen or xenoestrogens, uh, the substances that mimic estrogens, were preventing the thyroid hormone from getting into my thyroid um, it was preventing the thyroid hormone that my thyroid was making from getting into my cells to being used. And my doctor had no clue what I was talking about when I mentioned this to her. She said she had never heard of this before. And I was, you know, I was sick of being fat, so in my mind. So I started taking thyroid hormones to see if they would work. And voila, you know, they definitely worked. I did lose weight. But the problem is when when would I get off the hormone roller coaster? You know, many doctors tell you that once you begin thyroid medications that you have to take them for life. And they're yeah. assuming that the, the thyroid will never work adequately again on its own. But did I really want to take hormones for the rest of my life? You know, of course not. So I got off them and I'm following the nutritional balancing program, which has succeeded in almost healing my thyroid. I still have some time to go, another few months, maybe a year to go before it's completely recovered. and But strangely, you know, it's healing without my directly addressing the thyroid, you know, because the program heals your whole body and everything in your body just starts working like it's supposed to, and I, I love it. And it's critical to understand how to heal your thyroid rather than just covering up the symptoms with medication. And uh, so can you tell the listeners how is taking hormones, preventing patients from addressing the actual underlying problem with their thyroid, and what do you recommend, why do you recommend avoiding thyroid replacement hormones? Well, one of the main reasons we recommend avoiding it, it's like chelation, is that you don't need it. We find that we can, <clears throat> we can correct, unless the thyroid gland has been surgically removed or irradiated to where, you know, it's not there anymore, you know, it's not functioning anymore, the thyroid can be revived. It's just toxic. You get the thyroid, the iodine antagonists, 
um, chlorine, bromine, fluorine, copper, and mercury mostly, and they build up in the thyroid and it stops working. You can also get the Hashimoto's, the, the infection in the thyroid. Some people get Graves' disease, which is hyperthyroid. And as you clean it out, balance everything out, the thyroid starts working again. So one reason to avoid the hormones is we don't need them. Second reason is hormones are designed to be taken from the inside of the body. They're designed to be secreted, and they change from minute to minute. You get under stress, you're going to produce more thyroid hormone. You relax, you produce less. And it goes up and down all day long. And when you take a a solid amount, a pill, um, you upset that whole system. You, You wreck it. So it's not a natural therapy at all, the idea of bioidentical hormones. Really, it's not bioidentical at all because that's not how it's administered. It's not supposed to be administered, you know, in a pill or a patch or anything, shot. <clears throat> it's supposed to be secreted by the body. Um, I don't even think those bioidentical are necessarily bioidentical. You know what I mean? There can be variations. So um, we find that hormone therapy definitely gets in the way. A lot of it causes cancer, estrogen therapy, um, you know, the, some of the female hormone therapies that they do, um, not good at all. And we don't need it. We don't need testosterone therapy. Now, it may take a while to rebuild it. Using nutritional balancing could take a year, two years, three years even in some cases. So, you know, hopefully it's not that bad that you, you can't get by. But usually we can give remedies if we have to for, say, hot flashes or something. And the weight comes off, people. Everybody who does nutritional balancing gets thin, literally thin, if you do the diet properly. Yeah. If you do the diet properly, you get thin. So the weight is no problem. And um, there is an article, just like there's an article on chelation therapy on the website, there's an article on hormone replacement that uh, it tends to unbalance the body, it tends to rigidify the system so the body is not flexible. Um, Sometimes it tends to cause cancer. All the hormones are toxic. They tend to build up in the liver and elsewhere, and um, particularly the synthetic ones, but also the natural ones. And so it's a very easy therapy. A lot of holistic doctors are attracted to it. Um, even some of the good people like Dr. Brownstein talking about the thyroid, he's, he's a medical doctor. But they don't know how to rebuild the body, so the only thing left to them is to give the hormones. Yeah. If you know how to rebuild the body, you don't need to do, give hormones. And we do seem to be able to do that. Yeah, I was uh, talking with Nikki Moses, who's one of your, you know, people that you've trained and um I was amazed to learn that nutritional balancing can even help to reverse long-standing autoimmune thyroid dysfunction that's called Hashimoto's where the immune body is That one's easy. Yeah. And that's I, I a was very amazed. easy one to reverse. Wow. Graves' disease, sometimes a little longer, depending on what the cause is. Some people have a pituitary toxin. It can take a couple of years. But uh, Hashimoto's disease, generally easy. Wow. And yeah, by the way, just... things like reverse T3, though, that's just mercury poisoning. Oh, and really? about 100 conditions, and all they are is mercury poisoning. Hmm. Remove, start, let the body get rid of the toxic metals, and these conditions just vanish. Yeah, and the body will stop it's a whole different. It's a different perspective. We're not into identifying disease. We're not into diagnosing and curing. Those are medical words, and we don't do it that way. Our method is more like when you take your car to the car mechanic. You know, they take the parts off, they clean them up, uh, they replace the parts that are worn out, and they put everything back, and everything works fine. Yeah. See what I mean? That's how they fix your car. They don't spend their time on fancy diagnoses. Sometimes they do, but um, it's mostly about getting rid of the the gum and the poisons and repairing and replenishing what's missing, Mm -hmm. and the machine starts to work. And putting in some supercharged fuel. Yes, the right fuel. That's right. Stop putting in the wrong gasoline. That's a good point. And in, in a similar fashion um, with hormone replacement, when my naturopath discovered that I had, well, I don't go to anymore, uh, discovered that I had adrenal fatigue, you know, which is absolutely epidemic in our society, affecting tens of millions of people, um, my doctor recommended hormone replacement therapy, you know, because the adrenals produce 10 plus hormones like estrogen and testosterone. 
But if they're tired, they can't produce as much, and you have all kinds of unwelcome symptoms related to low estrogen and testosterone. And I had read yeah. a lot about the bad side effects of hormone replacement therapy, including cancer, and you know, absolutely refused her suggestion. So why are doctors recommending hormone replacement therapy for adrenal fatigue, and why should that be avoided? Well, because they don't know how to rebuild the adrenals. You know what I mean? Now, there are other reasons that are less, I don't know, they're, they're a little not so nice. Hormone testing is expensive. They make money on the hormones. They make money on the testing. You have to keep coming back for more testing. You know what I mean? Because they have to change the dosages sometimes. So doctors like it for that reason. You don't have to ask much of the patient. Nutritional balancing asks a lot of the patient. You have to go on a diet. You have to go to sleep early. You have to take, you know, eight supplements, uh, doing coffee enemas and saunas. You know, it's it's a more um, it's a much more participatory therapy. But I would say the main reason, or one of them, is certainly that they don't know how to rebuild the adrenals because they don't know how to detoxify the body deeply enough or re-nourish it or balance it properly. The adrenals has a lot to do with your autonomic nervous system, and that's a big area. We could do a whole program on autonomic nervous system, but nutritional balancing works on the autonomic nervous system to balance it and strengthen it and heal it. And if you don't do that, you won't fix your adrenals. Because the adrenals and the thyroid, but the adrenals even more, I'd say, are very influenced by the condition of the autonomic system, the sympathetic and parasympathetic system. And so if they don't know what to do, then the next best thing is just replace everything, replace the hormones. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, your adrenals are tired, they're not making the hormones. So here, we'll just give you some more hormones. And not once did my doctor tell me, oh, you need, probably need to rest and relax a little bit so that your, your yes. adrenals can recover. That's right. And actually, rest and relaxation is very important. You know, and then of course there are nutrients for the adrenals. Although there are certain patterns on a hair test where you can't give those nutrients, namely four lows. And there's a whole class of people who've been to a dozen doctors, and they've taken the adrenal supplements and the vitamins and the herbs, and they don't work. And that's because they're in four lows. And four lows is a very special pattern where, um, as Dr. Eck put it, you have to put the adrenals to bed. In other words, you can't nourish the adrenals. We don't nourish the adrenals in four lows. We put them to bed. Yeah. And that works. That works. But other things don't work. That's what I really like about the program is you really stress over and over. You have to rest. You have to sleep in order to heal and recover. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a very important message. People, you got to sleep. You know, that's how your body works. You got to sleep eight, nine, even ten hours a night. Get better. Yes. And, you know, I've read some books uh, that if you help, you know, the thyroid or adrenals for a short period of time, say a year or less by taking hormone replacement, that this can help them begin functioning again on their own. Like they don't recommend it long term, but just give them a little push, you know. What are your thoughts on this? I I wouldn't agree with that. I think you're just wasting time and you're putting more toxins into the body because the hormones are toxic. Don't, Don't ever think that they're not you know, toxic. The hormones are toxic. Even the natural hormones, you know, that your body makes mm. are somewhat toxic. You know, it's very important to detoxify your estrogen, for example. Um, so, no, this idea of... Now, I'll tell you, if you take hormones, under certain circumstances, it would rest your adrenals, but it tends to mess them up. You know, anybody knows about cortisone therapy, for example. And there's a lot of doctors that use cortisone, low-dose hydrocortisone uh, or cortisol for adrenal fatigue, um, and it's true that it would allow the adrenals to rest. But it, I don't know that um, that I'd ever recommend doing it that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't see a need for that. Instead, what we want to do is we want to get to a much deeper level. The problem isn't the adrenals; it's probably just a symptom of the system being way out of balance. And yeah. it takes a while to put it back in balance, so it might as well get started. You know, if you're lucky and you do your hormones, and you know, then the body may come back into balance by itself a little bit. But um, we don't we don't need to do it that way. We can start immediately balancing the body, and in most cases, that uh, will move you along a lot faster and is safer. 
Okay. And a big thing on the nutritional balancing program is coffee enemas. And um, you recommend doing them to detox the liver because it's a very, and, and the colon because they're very toxic organs today in our bodies. And, and uh, the rest of the body. The coffee enema works on the whole body. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. If you, in my article on the web on coffee enemas, there's a map, there's a diagram of the colon. And I took it out of Bernard Jensen's book on iridology because he found that there's a direct reflex from the colon. Each segment of the colon reflexes to a different part of the body. And so as you work on the colon, you will work on all, all the body f- through that reflex system. Dr. Jensen, was, he loved to show that like a person had brain cancer, and he would show through the ir- iris and even through x-rays that the segment of the colon related to the brain was um, you know, full of parasites or full of bacteria. And when you clear that segment of the colon through colonic irrigation or coffee enemas, or well, those are the only methods I can think of, um, the, co- the cancer goes away. Wow. See what I mean? There's a reflex system. So the coffee, although it definitely does physical cleansing of the colon and it does chemical cleansing of the liver, increases bile flow, uh, alkalinizes the intestine, which is very helpful for digestion. Um, it also can work on every part of the body through the reflex system. And is that because the I've heard different estimates that 65 to 80 percent of the immunity is surrounding the large intestine or the intestines? I don't think it's the large intestine. I think it's the small. The small the intestine. Large system. Yeah. yeah, Peyer's patches and other things. It's not the large. The large intestine, its main function is to reabsorb water and to form the stool. And there's some, in some people, there's some vitamin manufacturing going on in the large intestine by certain bacteria. Um, the small intestine has more of an immune system function. Yeah. Uh, the lymph tissue around, like, pyrus patches. And so um, the coffee, though, is absorbed into the portal system, into the liver, and it works on the liver in a chemical way increasing bile flow and uh, perhaps other chemicals from the liver. And then in the colon, it's a mechanical uh, cleansing process that goes on, which is very important because people are producing toxic chemicals in there and then they're reabsorbing them into their body. And so is is it just as beneficial to do water colonics, like at a colon hydrotherapy spa? It's not as good, no. No, it's not as good. It's too much water. We like the coffee much better, which could be put in a colonic machine. It's not the least. I take a lot of uh, coffee. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't need all that water. You don't want all that water. I tell people no, col- no colonics all the time. You, you can do a couple colonics when you start out, but it's too much water. Yeah. So if you want to do if you want to do it with a colon the therapist, maybe do a cleansing enema meaning that with the colonic machine, you know, put some water in there, rub, rub the abdomen, get the water out, and then put the coffee in and just leave it for 15, mm-hmm. 20 minutes, even 30. Yeah, because I, I had definitely during my life I've had series of, of colonics, and they really fill you up completely with water, and it's really uncomfortable, and, you know, just to try to evacuate you. But with the coffee enemas, you're only taking in a couple cups of coffee. It's That's not right. that much. very simple. It's right. much different. Yes. What do you What do you say to people? I've heard a lot of people that are against coffee enemas because they think that it clears out probiotics from the intestines. It doesn't. We don't find that to be the case. First of all, the coffee doesn't go all around, and you know it, it isn't. We don't use that much water. We use maybe two cups of water. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not going all over your colon by any means, and. Um, we just don't find that to be the case. Now, if you're worried about it, you could always take some probiotics, you know, but we don't find that to be a problem. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about nutrition. Um, you you recommend on the nutritional balancing program to, to eat meat and to even eat red meat. Uh, why is this recommended yes, on lamb. the program? Because lamb is a very rich food. There's something special about lamb. There's a reason why it's mentioned in the Bible. 
Jesus was called the Lamb of God. The Jewish people ate the Paschal Lamb, you know, for Passover. There's a reason for all this. There's a reason. It's a it's a special animal. It seems to have certain chemicals in it that promote spiritual development, basically. You know, which is what the Bible is concerned about. And general health. Now, beef has been very hybridized, so we don't like it as much. But there's nothing wrong with lamb. You know, for most people, okay. I'm not going to say everybody, but for most everybody. And why do we need that? Why is it important on the, the it program? It just seems to be. I don't know. You know, it's young, and it's got a lot of nutrients in it that we need. Ultimately, when you ask questions like that, Wendy, there's no answer. You yeah. I mean? <laughs> I mean, you know, why do we need sunshine? Well, there's some kind of frequency there that we yeah. need, but exactly what it is. Uh, milk, uh, lamb and meat have very good forms of zinc, for example. They have very good forms of taurine, carnitine, uh, selenium, sulfur compounds, some very good organic sulfur compounds needed for detoxification are found in meat. And they're not found in the vegetable kingdom. Yeah. At least not as much. And so, um, but, you know, the ultimate answer is that Dr. Eck found that this is what works he wasn't sure why. We would say it's because the whole world is so yin and we need the zinc and the zinc is not in the food anymore. Where are you going to get it? You're left with meat. If we didn't yeah. have to kill the poor little lambs, that'd be better. But it seems like we need them today. And so we yeah. just have to bless them and thank them. Yeah, and these the vegetarian and vegan diets have become so popular these days due to so many studies. Yeah, they're killing a lot of people. Toxic. Yeah, I know it saddens me because I was looking the other day at Barnes and Noble, and some of the best-selling books are promoting the vegan diet, and I just think I it's going to be absolutely disastrous uh, for their health and with a lot of people that are led astray by this book. Because you know you it don't is. have to be a biochemist to know these diets cannot meet our nutritional requirements as humans. Well, there are a lot of books out there though that tell you that they can, and I get a lot of emails telling me that I'm wrong, and you know people have been vegan for ten years or whatever it is. But I find that they do okay, but they die young. They die young. Yeah. So there are problems with it. Lots yeah, of problems. Yeah, and you, I think a lot of the, we don't even know about a lot of nutrients that are in food. I mean, we like to think that we do, but you right. can't supplement away a lot of the nutrient deficiencies that are in the vegetarian and vegan diet. It just doesn't quite work. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's a difficult subject, um, and uh, uh, but but Dr. Eck found this years ago. I was a vegetarian, and he said to me, "You'll be craving red meat. You'll see." And I just laughed at him. I, I could hardly digest it, and this is how it is with a lot of people. As your as your body's health worsens, you can't digest the heavier foods. Um, but he was right, and um, I did start to crave. Red meat, and uh, so that's you know whether it's the young quality or the zinc or the selenium or the sulfur, I'm not sure which which one it is. Yeah, because it seems like because the vegetarian or vegan diets don't have meat, they don't they're not getting a lot of sulfur-containing amino acids, if at all. And right, these are it's very low in those. You need these to detox your liver. So are they going to be becoming more toxic than a meat eater? Yes. They're going to be accumulating. Yes, often they do. And that's right. And the sulfur in, in vegetables is not quite the same. Not the yeah. same at all. So, yes, those people become more toxic. They can develop all kinds of diseases. Yeah, because it seems like if they're going to be more toxic, they can also die of cancer and other things. It's the, probably the yeah. very thing they're trying to prevent. They're being told That's by right. the book to prevent cancer if they stop eating meat and dairy, and it just it just isn't the case at all. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And if, you, if you want to be a vegetarian, at least eat eggs and dairy. At least yeah, eat I'm eggs and dairy, and preferably some uh, sardines. Yeah, I was going to ask you about dairy. Do you think dairy has value, um, like a pasture? It's very much value, but it's got to be raw. Okay. When you cook it, when you you know pasteurize it, homogenize it, it damages the calcium, it damages the protein, it damages the fat. It's not nearly as good a product. And you can okay. buy raw cheese in most situations. 
Now, there are people who can't handle dairy. You have to stay away from it for a while, at least six months. And then often if you reintroduce a little bit, again, mono meal, just some, a little bit of cheese or something, you'll find you can digest it. Yeah, I found that also because I couldn't tolerate dairy for a really long time, and I realized it was just the pasteurized dairy that bothered me. So I didn't eat mm-hmm. dairy for a long time, and then now that I got on the nutritional balancing program, you recommend <clears throat> drinking a little bit of raw milk uh, every day or every other day, and I tolerate it just fine. I don't have any problems. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Is the, most, the quality of most dairy is horrible. Horrible. Yeah. And a lot of the cheese isn't even cheese. They call it cheese food. It's some sort of glued together, manufactured, who knows what it is, you know? Spoiled yeah. milk they use sometimes. It's awful. Yeah. And But, you know, the milk I'm drinking, it's raw, organic, grass-fed uh, dairy. It's uh, it's pretty expensive, but it's it tastes amazing, and I don't have problems with it. Yeah. And so you also think that raw food should generally be avoided. Why is this, and what are the, some of the problems with the raw food diets that are all the rage right now? Well, the problems are um, yin disease, what we call yin. Uh, raw food is very yin. It's often contaminated with bacteria and parasites, by the way, especially in restaurants. I would never have raw food, not even a salad in restaurants for that reason. The, the help just isn't that clean today in most restaurants. But uh, the symptoms, people get tired, um, people get malnourished, they can't absorb enough minerals from the raw food, and there can be, a, you know, dozens of other symptoms, everything from irritability to uh, PMS to allergies and other things. So it's mainly a malnutrition problem, raw food. Yeah, I mean, from what I understand, the raw vegan diet is actually one of the deadliest diets out there. Yeah. I may put something else up because some people warned me about that and I should have mentioned, mentioned the problems. Yeah, actually, I had a, a lecture in school. There was a, a naturopathic doctor who was also vegan himself. He just said he liked the diet, and so that's how he ate. But in his opinion, he felt that the raw vegan diet, um, the people die in their 50s if they've been doing it for too long. That it's, it's yes, actually, you die young. You may it's seem a, healthy, but they tend to die young. They they die of malnutrition. Yeah, and that was coming from a, a, a someone who was vegan. So he was saying the raw yeah. vegan diet is it's just the deadliest out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. And what about juicing? Do you recommend juicing? Only a little bit because it's yin. It's very, very, very yin. But it does provide nutrition. And so we recommend 10 to 12 ounces of carrot juice mostly because it has a special form of calcium in it. And then into that, you could put one Swiss chard leaf or a couple spinach leaves and add some greens. And you could alternate that with one or two ounces of wheatgrass juice. But uh, that's all we recommend. We don't want people juicing all day. Two yen. Two yen. And what do you mean by yen? Can you explain that to the listeners? Yen means expanded and cold and centrifugal in nature. And it's an oriental term. It's a physics term. Yin and yang are physics qualities. Nutritional balancing is very much a physics program. It's about physics. It's not so much about diseases. Diseases are just the system out of balance. And so yin and yang, yang is warm, contracted, centripetal, meaning moving inward, inward moving, and downward moving. Yin is outward moving and upward moving, generally speaking. There are exceptions to some of this, these rules. Yin foods are foods that grow up in the air or that grow above the ground. Yang foods tend to grow underground, roots, or on the ground, like vegetables. But fruit tends to grow nuts, seeds, fruits. They tend to grow in the air, more, much more yin. It's explained in macrobiotics, I think, somewhat. And I have some articles on the website, drlwilson.com, that also explain yin and yang and what we call yin disease which is so common today. You know, yin diseases are, well, most of them today, but things like all the yeast problems, um, most of the cancers, um, some infections, tumors are yin, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's our problem today, and it's a different aspect of health and disease that not too many people talk to or talk about, but it's a very important one. Very important. Well, Dr. We're one Wilson, of the few groups. Yeah, go uh, ahead. 
Dr. Wilson, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, that was so informative and enlightening, and I have to say that I truly respect what you're doing. And I, I can't express enough how much I admire practitioners like yourself that are finding innovative and incredibly effective ways to heal the body. So please keep trying to educate the world about nutritional balancing, and I'm here to help spread your message. And the nutritional balancing program has helped me so much recover my health, and I can't express my thanks enough. So thank you so much for being on the show. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Wendy, for having me on the show. It's my great pleasure. And um, keep it, keep up the good work. Thank you. All right. And thank you, all you listeners out there, for tuning in. Um, next week, we're going to have a very important show with April Renee talking about the dangers of vaccines. And so you can decide whether or not you want to put them in your body or in your body. So thank you so much for listening.